Hello everyone, today I'm going to take a look at the Fortran programming language. So Fortran is a general purpose programming language considered to be the first widely used high-level language. It was created in 1957 by Sean Bacchus at IBM. It's mainly used for numeric computation and scientific computing in areas such as weather prediction, fluid dynamics, physics, and others. As I always do in this channel, I'm going to make a cool game with it. There are seven Fortran standards. From what I've read, everything before Fortran 90 is considered legacy and Fortran 95 is the stable version, which I think is pretty much Fortran 19, but with a couple of extra things added. Most people see Fortran as a really old and forgotten language, but in reality, there are several standards released not too long ago, like 2003, 2008, and 2018. Actually, the next standard will be released sometime in 2023, so if new standards are getting released, it means people are still using and supporting this language, I guess. Which is funny because you will think that this language is still mostly used because there are a lot of legacy code bases just like COBOL, but who knows? Anyway, I wanted to show the steps I did to use this language. So first step is to download a compiler. I use G Fortran, which is developed by the G and U project. Let's take a look at the Hello World in Fortran, taken from the Fortran website. My first question is, why is there an asterisk after print? Maybe it's for formatting. After looking it up, it's simply just to say to Fortran to automatically determine the appropriate format for each variable pass. So yes, it is for formatting. Compiling Fortran is similar to compile C code, so choose pass the output and input files. Now, remember when I say that Fortran has several standards? My question is, what standard does this compiler use by default? If you say, oh, if the file extension is F19, then it must be inferred from there. Then I'm afraid you are wrong. The default value for STG is GNU, which is specified as a superset of the Fortran 95 standard that includes all of the extensions supported by the GNU Fortran. So yeah, it would be kind of cool if the help command was a tiny bit more descriptive with the standard. So this code compiles and runs correctly, but why is there a space after the string? According to Jim Lewis at Stack Overflow, basically it's just a really, really old Fortran feature. Moving on to the variables, there are five built-in data types, integer, real, complex, character, and logical, which makes sense. So a program that declares variables look like this. So it looks okay, but what is implicit none? According to the Fortran website, it tells the compiler that all variables will be explicitly declared. Without this statement, variables will be implicitly typed according to the letter they begin with. So that last part is really interesting. After locking it up, it seemed to be another of those really old features where variables beginning from i to n are integers and everything else is real type. In more times, everyone in the Fortran community agreed that this is a really bad practice. But when you think about the point of this language, it was to be used by mathematicians and scientists. It kind of makes sense when you are writing formulas. It is common to use I, J, K as integers. But I digress. Let's now look at the, how we can call C functions. I use binaries for relief made by the user Xini PL. 
It says work in progress, but we can go out whatever is missing. Looking at the C bindings, it surprised me how clean and easy to understand it is. So the C structs are types in Fortran. Apparently, there is no way to declare constants, so you just have to declare it as integer, and that's it. Finally, things that don't return something are subroutines, and those that do are functions. You just have to set the type of the parameters. The intent, which is just to say to the compiler that the in parameter won't change, and the type of the output if there's any. And of course, bind to C and the name of the C function. I really like the fact that there is no return. You just have to declare the result variable when declaring the function. I think Pascal has a similar feature. So with this, I made my first window in Fortran with this code. And it doesn't work. Something funny about the colors. Really, colors are defined as unsigned integers, but Fortran only has int a, t, which is signed integer. That goes from minus 128 to 127. So when I pass 255, that number is out of range. To fix this, the compiler suggests to pass an extra parameter, no range check, so the number out of range wraps around to values in range. So with that change, it now compiles and runs correctly, except that the window title is strange. After a lot of googling, I found out that Fortran strings are not null terminated, unlike C strings. So basically, without a null terminator, C doesn't know where the string ends. So I have to manually append the null character to every string that I pass to a C function. So after that change, it finally works correctly. Let's now look at the implementation of the game. The implementation is based on an implementation made by user Rolin Sheng. I hope I pronounced your name incorrectly. Using a framework called RenPy. I also use a similar Python script that you use to generate bitmaps from any song. The bitmaps are simply the number of seconds of each one set and the note that correspond. Basically, the Python script does the following. Detect the number of seconds of every one set in the song. Get the frequency of each node using Fourier transform. And use a clustering algorithm, in this case, k-means, to group the frequencies into four bits. All of this could be done in Fortran, but implementing all of these algorithms would take time and effort, so I decided to go for the easy route with Python. Let's now take a look at the implementation of the bitmap. So first I wrap the entire code in a module called map. Here you can see the first thing I define are the types, which as I said before, are similar to the C structs. So here we have the bit type, which represents the notes of the song, the bar type, which are the four bars that contain the different notes. Note that the array that contains the bits doesn't have a dimension specified and is allocatable, which means that we can allocate any number of bits we want. This will be important later when we are reading from the bitmap file. And finally, the message type with the message showing the accuracy of the player hitting the note. And the music playing type, which contains all of the previous type plus some timer and the song playing. Also, we have a texture with the arrows and the music playing type. The word contains separates the declaration of the type with the definition of the function and subroutines. We don't actually need to declare these subroutines before the contains word. We just simply have to declare them and that's it. There are three parts that I want to show how I implemented in this rhythm game how to load the bitmap previously shown, how to slide the arrows through the bars according to the bitmap, and how to check the accuracy of the node press. So first, to load the bitmap, I need to read the file generated by the Python script. First, I open the file with open. Unit is an integer used to identify the file when reading and closing from it. 
do is an infinite loop because we don't know the exact size of the file beforehand. So here's a cool feature of Fortran that I haven't seen in any other language. You can read and sort the contents of the file directly into the variables. In any other language, I will have to read the whole line, split the string, and set the variables. But in Fortran, I can do all of that in a single line. Now, for some reason, I could not get Fortran to tell me when it reaches the end of the file. So when I'm trying to read beyond the end of the file, it crashes. Nothing I try works, so as a workaround, I simply set the last node to minus one. So when reading that value, I should break from the loop. It's most likely something wrong with my code, but I could not find anything that worked and I don't know what I'm doing wrong, so yeah. So first I iterate through the whole file only to get the number of nodes of this particular song. Remember when I said the array containing the nodes don't have a specified size. Now we know the size, so we simply call allocate to set the size. Now I have to rewind the file to read it from the beginning and loop again to set the bit object into the arrays and finally close the file. Maybe this is a bit too overcomplicated, but yeah, it is what it is. Now sliding the notes across the screen and signing them according to the song is pretty simple. The notes have a predefined speed and we know the distance between the origin point and the spot. So the math is simple. Speed is equal to distance divided by the sign. Or in this case, the distance between the node and the spot is the speed of the node times the time. And the time is defined as the difference between the current time and the one set defined in the bit. As time passes, the difference gets smaller and so does the distance and that's how the nodes slide through the bars. I actually have no idea how other written games do it, but I think this implementation is pretty clear. Finally, detecting the accuracy of the node press is also pretty simple. We get the difference between the current time and the one set. Depending on the time difference when a key is pressed, we set the different messages. When recording this video, I found out that there is a problem with these hardcode values, since they depend on the speed of the nodes. If the speed is different, these values no longer work. So, yeah. To fix this, I could probably change these values to use the speed of the nodes. But yeah, this will require a lot more of testing. So that pretty much covered the most important parts of the implementation of this written game. As always, the code is uploaded to GitHub. Fortran is a nice language with a couple of quirks here and there, but still, I had a good time developing in this language. So yeah, thank you very much for watching.